we want what somebody else has mm -hmm. we want somebody else's husband we want somebody else's wife That's we real. want somebody else's money we want somebody else's business yeah. we want all of those things and it's like god is saying but i want you Right. So the question is, is when are we going to love the Lord again? But if when you don't work the marriage and you're constantly giving yourself to other things, other people, your work is is, you know, getting all your attention. Your kids are getting all of your attention. All these things and people are getting your attention, but you're not pouring into your marriage. Of course, you're going to feel some sort of a division. Mm. You're what are the top five reasons people fall out of love in a marriage? Five common reasons why people fall out of love in a marriage. One, lack of communication. Effective communication is the foundation of any strong relationship. When couples stop communicating openly and honestly, misunderstandings, resentment, and emotional distance can grow. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Unshakable Conversations. My name is Kenneth Allen Thomas. I'm here with my beautiful wife, Miss yeah. Jocelyn Thomas. You're looking good there with the pink girl. Thanks, boo. Looking good there with the <laughs> pink. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. That's how you got to do it, fellas. You got to make sure that they know that you know that they know. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so so today, everybody, if you don't know who we are, um, we are a, a couple that's just, you know, on fire for the Lord, on fire for God mm -hmm. and um, wanting to help people. We just want to see people win. We want to see, you know, God's glory all over everybody. Um, and we want to make sure that you understand um, what it means to be unshakable. Um, we are a family that has been through many different challenges in our life. For those that are new to our channel, we thank you. We welcome you. Grab Amen. a cup of coffee, grab some water, something, tea, whatever it is, and, you know, get down with, get down with us. Um, me being a professional choreographer for 20 plus years now uh, a yeah, coach my wife is a photographer and a stay-at-home mom who's killing the game and everything right now <laughs> and also an awesome influencer as well too so with that being said once we got all of that out of the way we also have a special needs son uh, mm -hmm. Christian so not only have we been through a lot um, you know, just being fully transparent, both of us have been uh, married prior. Um, so we've been through the divorce um, and we've been married uh, and together uh, for 10 plus years now. Um, five children. Uh, we are one in, in our, each age range. One in each age range. <laughs> we got one in the 20s, one in the teens, teens. one in the tens. Uh, seven year old and um, toddler. toddler. All right. So, yeah, we know a little bit about a little bit. <laughs> So listen, everybody, we just thank you for, for rocking out yes, with us and enjoy. Guys. So we're going to dive in to a couple of things today that, um, you know, as my wife was in prayer this morning, she was in the book of Hosea and it's a tough, it's a tough read. It's a tough read. So I'm going to let my wife start off here, you know, and sharing her feelings on what, you know, uh, she thought about it, what the Lord gave her. Um, and I pray that it blesses you too, because I know it blessed me and I'll, I'll dive in and we'll just chop it up. So, you know, if you guys want, go to Hosea chapter three um, and we're working this out here. Let us know if we if we sound good, if we look good and all that. Let us know in the comments and dive into the conversation. Yeah. So as I was in prayer, the Lord showed me Hosea three and I'm like, what? This isn't really popular, you know, yeah. but um, come to find out I have read it before because there were marks in my Bible from it. Mm hmm. And um, it speaks about Hosea being married to a prostitute, which was her name was Gomer. Yeah. And, um, you know, she went astray and did her thing, but the Lord had him by her back. Mm -hmm. So that's, I, I guess, what really caught my eye was the fact that he had to buy his wife back mm. with silver and barley and... I was just like, wow, like he had to pay for his wife to come back home because she wouldn't come back home. Mm. And um, and then I had read in the commentary that like it was a picture of, you know, what God does for us. Yeah. Like we go astray and we do our own thing. And, you know, he sent his son to die for us, for our sins, yeah. even though we didn't um deserve it even though we didn't earn it someone had to pay the price and yeah. it wasn't us yeah 
Um, and so I think that's what really kind of like caught my eye was those two things that, you know, the Lord sent his son for us. Yeah. And a lot of times we take advantage of that. Mm hmm. And um, that he had to, buy, you know, pay back, you know, buy back his wife to, to get her to come back. Yeah. I think that we got to dive so deep into this because it's so good, right? Let's let's go ahead and read, right? And I need, yeah. I read it in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and the word of the Lord says it so. Then the Lord said to me, this is Hosea chapter 3, everybody. Then the Lord said to me, go and love your wife again. Let me say that again, right? Then the Lord said to me, Go and love your wife again. So the question I have, did he lose his love? Mm -hmm. Did he lose his love for his wife in the first place? Because if you got to love her again, right? And meaning if she's a prostitute and she's going out and she is um, sleeping with other men, right? How hard is it for a man to love a woman, right? And the Lord is telling me to love this woman. Mm-hmm even though she's out sleeping and giving her body to other men, but she's supposed to be married to me, mm -hmm. right? And this right here, let's just, just hang our nail just on that right there, right? It, it's almost like, it's almost like when we leave, when we leave Jesus and we leave God, right? We are, the first thing to leave is the heart, right? The first thing to return is the heart, right? So it's like love, to love again, right? It's like almost like, man, I lost my love for you because, and I turn my back on you because you have been doing doing me so wrong. You've been doing me dirty, right? So then it goes to say, um, even though she commits adultery with another lover. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing, right? Here's what some of y'all may or may not know. Us as the human beings, right, the children of God, we are the bride, yeah. <laughs> right? And in 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 Jesus, right, is is our groom, mm -hmm. right? Amen. And as Jesus is our groom, we're married to him, right? We're married to God. Yeah. We're supposed to be married to him, but we're out here in this world sinning, cheating, yep. cheating right? Committing adultery mm -hmm. against the husband, against the bridegroom. Yes. Right? My God. So so this is where we got to really take a, a look back and we got to crucify our flesh, right? We got to look back and we got to sit there and say, yo, number one, we need to repent. Mm -hmm. Number two, we have to understand that God is in God is holy and we should be acting in holiness. Do we get it right every day? Mm -hmm. No, but that's why we should be continuously repenting yes. day to day, right? In his so face, check this, amen. Right? Check this out, right? He says, this will illustrate that the Lord still loves Israel. Right. Even though the people have turned to other gods in love to worship them. Mm -hmm. So I brought her back for 15 pieces of silver and five brushels, uh, bushels, bushels, <laughs> <Forgive Bushels. me. laughs> bushels of barley and a measure of wine. Then I said to her, you must live in my house for many days and stop your prostitution mm. during this time you will not have sexual relations with anyone not even me mm -hmm. this this shows that israel will go a long time without a king or prince and without sacrifices sacred pillars priests or even idols but afterward the people will return and devote themselves yes. to the lord their god and to david's descendants their king in the last days they will tremble in awe of the lord and of his goodness not ours mm -hmm. right and when i read that it, it like so many things like came to mind and it's how we act as human beings today. We idolize presidents. Mm -hmm. We idolize kings. Artists. We idolize artists. We idolize those, you know, uh, pastors. Sport, pastors, pastors, football teams, right? Baseball team. We idolize athletes like crazy, like they're God. Mm -hmm. When in actuality, they're human just like us. Right. They can fall and stumble. They can fall and stumble, and they do. And we've seen it happen many times just in this year alone, mm -hmm. from athletes to pastors to artists. Like, it's it's almost like it's the year of exposure, 
right? You want exposure yes. so much. Guess what? I'm go you're going to get exposed in such a way mm -hmm. that not even the people that yearn for what you have will want it anymore. Mm -hmm. And that is what I feel that God has been doing with a lot of people. You know, it it's like you... You say you want the fame. You say you want uh, the money. You say you want this. You say you want that. But you're saying all that, and I'm not even involved mm -hmm, in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? So we have been... This is a hard word, but the reality is a lot of us have been prostituting ourselves mm -hmm. to the word. I mean, to, 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 the, to world. the world. You know, to the world, because, like, we want what somebody else has. Mm-hmm. We want somebody else's husband. We want somebody else's wife. That's we real. want somebody else's money. We want somebody else's business. Yeah. We want all of those things. And it's like God is saying, but I want you. Mm -hmm. Right? So the question is, is when are we going to love the Lord again? Yeah. When are we going to love him again? When, when are we going to love the one that created us in the first place? Because these idols are going to fall. Mm -hmm. And they've been falling, you know? Yeah. I was going to say something and I totally forgot. Oh. <laughs> It'll come back. It'll though. come back. It'll come back. But but let us know in the comments, you know, what y'all what do y'all think of that, right? Where do you where do you have your own conviction at? And I know for, you know, for us it's like, okay, we went through a long time of struggle and pain, but at the same time we also prostituted ourselves mm -hmm. in such a way that was not glorious, was not ideal, was not of God in so many ways, right? So I feel Hosea in a lot of ways as well too. On the flip side, you got a you got a wife that's prostituting herself. And me in my in my old marriage, it was almost I'm not saying my ex wife was prostituting herself <laughs> or anything like yeah. that. That's that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> but what I am saying is that there were times where it was like, dang, like, you know, even and, and I, I take blame for this as well, too, like where we were giving ourselves to other things other than each other. But we wasn't meant to be together in the first place. You know what I'm saying? But the fact is, is that even when you going so hard, you know, for for something, it's like, dang, like, I, I don't even like love you no more. Right. And where God is saying right here, he's saying, you know, find the love again. Right. And how many times do you hear people in marriages say i fell out of love i fell out of love <laughs> right a lot. i fell out of because love because that's a justification to to get out of it mm. it's a justification i feel it's the simple way out it's the easy way out mm -hmm. it's the it's 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 a phrase that people use very loosely where they think that people on the other side are supposed to be like well if there's no love then i guess you can't have a marriage mm. but there was no love when you first started. Mm -hmm. You had to work it out. You had to get to know each other. You had to uh, figure each other out, learn each other, learn each other's loves, interests, all of that. You didn't see somebody very at the first look of an eye and be like, oh, my God, I love him. You know, it doesn't always happen that way. A lot of times it's it's a whole journey that you go through where you're like, wow, with time I fell in love. Right. But if you don't work the marriage and you're constantly giving yourself to other things, other people, your work is is, you know, getting all your attention. Your kids are getting all of your attention. All these things and people are getting your attention, but you're not pouring into your marriage. Of course, you're going to feel some sort of a division. Mm. You're yeah. going to feel like, well, we fell out of love. You didn't fall out of love. Come on. You just ain't working you as ain't hard working as you were it. when you first, <laughs> you know, tried to be with this person. Yeah. I feel a lot of people, they um, get married to say, oh, my God, we're married. We're, you know, let's have a party type thing. But y'all y'all work so hard to get there, mm. but y'all not working really hard to stay there. It's not going to be an easy journey marriage is not easy it's a beautiful thing but it's not always easy mm. you said something key you work so hard to get there but you don't work so hard to stay there mm -hmm. right the reality is what got you here won't get you there i feel that a lot of people you know they want the party right you want the party you want everybody you want the gifts they right? invest you more the, in the wedding than the marriage exactly you want the celebration of the fact that oh it's cool to be married 
right? Or to have this wedding and you want the dress and you want the big shebang. And then two years later, what's happening? Why? Because now you're at the part of your vows where it says for sick. For better or worse. For worse. For sickness and in health, yeah. For sickness and in health. Like you're at for that richer part. richer or poor. Or poor, <laughs> right? Now you reach the poor part right now you so, want to run now you want to run oh snap it was it was super rich in the beginning right the honeymoon was popping now you hit some bumps in the road and this is where like you get tested you this is where you get tested where if you're really in love or if you're really about that because when you if you feel like that like there are times where oh i fell out of love no you are just not willing to go through Right. And that's the thing. People are not willing to push forward because they feel like the love isn't there. Right. You you stop working at it. Check this out. Right. Let's yeah. let's let's try this. Let's try this. Right. We're going to ask Gemini. What are the top five reasons people fall out of love in a marriage? <laughs> Here are five common reasons why people fall out of love in a marriage. One, lack of communication. Effective communication is the foundation of any strong relationship. When couples stop communicating openly and honestly, misunderstandings, resentment, and emotional distance can grow. Two, changing priorities. As individuals grow and evolve, wow. their priorities may shift. If one partner's priorities change significantly and they no longer align with their spouses, it can create strain on the relationship. Mm. Three, lack of intimacy. Intimacy encompasses both physical and emotional connection. That's when good. either aspect is neglected, it can lead to feelings of loneliness and disconnection. Mm -hmm. Four, unresolved conflict. Unresolved conflict can fester over time, creating resentment and damaging the emotional bond between partners. Five, external stressors. External factors such as financial difficulties, I was gonna job say money. stress, or health problems can put significant strain on a marriage, making it difficult to maintain a strong emotional connection. It's important to remember that falling out of love doesn't necessarily mean the end of a relationship. With open communication, effort, and sometimes professional help, couples can often rekindle their love and Come on. their connection. Now let the church say amen. amen. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> now listen. Now, now Gemini just went all in and told y'all the top five reasons why people fall out of love. That's real. Right? And here's my thing. So what is what are the solutions right how do you how do you keep the flame going how do you keep pushing right it, it's more listen let me tell you something it's more than a book it's more than a love language book or anything like that now those things help i do believe that however they only help to a degree because if you don't apply mm -hmm. what it is that you you're reading it, yeah. Right. Then what good is it anyway? It was just a good read and it got your brain stimulating mm -hmm. at the end of the day. So how do how do you continue to push forward? So let me let me throw this at you. And this is what I, I do, you know, with, with my wife, my wife and I do this all the time. So we may, you know, toss like, you know, text messages towards one another throughout the day. Right. We're constantly communicating all the time. And it's hard to do however it can be done right you got it's all about this one key word and y'all gotta write this down intentional are you intentional mm -hmm. about you know making sure that your, your your love has all that she needs are you intentional about providing the need for her right there is you got the needs of a man and you got the needs for a woman are you intentional about fulfilling yeah, those particular those needs, needs? Right. amen yeah. Well, just like, you know, we shared with um, some friends last night yeah. that it doesn't matter how busy you get with life. Life is going to happen and you're going to get busy and you're going to get worn down and you're going to get worn out. That is no excuse for you to neglect your spouse right. at all. We have five kids. We're currently raising four boys mm -hmm. and a dog. Mm -hmm. And we just have a lot going on. And in the 11 years that we have been together, yeah. I've never felt that any of us have lacked for a long period of time, maybe for a short period of time with like, oh, hold up. This was a super busy season for like football or soccer. Um, let's get it back. Yeah. You know, like where did we lack off here? You know, or where we see um, something happening where we're like extremely busy and we're 
we feel like, hold up, we haven't had a date. Right. Let's run it back, check our priorities, yeah. and see where we're going to start fitting a date in. Like, you have to be mindful of you, you, your needs and your spouse and be able to voice that and be able to hear your spouse and what they're saying and not just hear them and not do nothing about it. Hear them and do something about it. And here's what I hear a lot as well, too. I tried that. I tried that with my spouse. I well, tried you that ain't with tried my hard man. enough. You know, he don't want to and da 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 Listen. At one point, you had a relentless attitude towards the one that you wanted. Even though now you may be feeling some form of rejection, you have to always go back and do the things that you used to do to get that individual in the first place. Like getting yourself dialed up. Come on now. Don't think that just because y'all been together for 15 plus right. years that you could just Come be on, looking Some bummy of y'all be getting a little bit too comfortable all the time. Like, like, <laughs> yo, don't be slipping. <laughs> like, you can still be cute for your man. <laughs> yeah, yo, don't be slipping. And fellas, listen, let me tell y'all something. I make it a, I make it a point. Some people don't like it or whatever, but I don't care. I make it a point. I'm, I'm getting my hair cut every week. That's right. I'm getting my hair cut every week. Why? Because I know that my wife likes it when a brother hair. Listen, I'm not trying to like go to my wife and walk in the house, you know, from work or traveling or something like looking that. Real and rough. looking super rough. Like, what is that? I want her <laughs> to want me. Yes. Right. And if and if I got if if that requires me to make sure I am investing in, you know, how I, my appearance and how I look, then and I know that she loves me regardless. I know, I know that. However, it's something that I know that she likes, you know, and I like it as well too. I like when my wife, you know, uh, is, you know, uh, comes and rubs all over me or touches me and stuff like that. and makes me feel good. Like, dang, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm well, I'm keeping myself fit. I'm keeping myself together. And, it's not like, cause I've been in relationships where I don't even want to touch. You know what I'm saying? Like, ugh, mm -hmm. ugh, ugh, mm -hmm. ugh. It's not what it used to be. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like when you, when you've had uh, a certain dish and it's made a certain way, <laughs> right? And then somebody changed the ingredients. You don't even want that dish no more. Like it don't taste the same yeah. like it used to. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. <sighs> You know it. Look at her. <laughs> she want me right now. <laughs> Got her blushing. <laughs> Shut up. Listen, so, so okay, so on the flip side, right, as we, every, as we dove into this text here, it's the same when it comes to the Lord. Like, yes. some of us have fell, fell from being intimate with the lord some of us have fell from you know praying mm -hmm. as like how we should be mm -hmm. right we ask the lord why aren't things happening why aren't you moving why aren't you Speaking, taking me to that neck why yeah. can't i hear you and in return it's almost like the lord is putting this this block you know he sees you but there's a block there's a boundary that you got to break now mm -hmm. because he's saying well you used to love me you, you used, used to, to come, spend, time, you used to spend time with me. Yeah. You, you used to like, you know, care and you used to cry on my shoulder. You used to, you know, you used want to me, like want me. me. You used yes. to yearn for me. You used to be at my feet. You used to worship me. Now you worship them. Mm -hmm. You used to worship me. Now you worship her. Mm -hmm. You used to worship me. Now you worship that money. You used to worship me. Now you worship that sex. You yes. used to worship me. Now you're worshiping your success. Mm -hmm. Instead of worshiping the one who gave, gave you the you. success. Or do you love the blessing or, or the, the blesser. blesser more? Come on, right? So we we have to sit there and listen. I pray that I am stepping on somebody's toes. I pray that I am really like uh, penetrating somebody's heart right now because I want you to win. And I want you, I want you to know how much the Lord truly, truly, truly cares about you. Mm -hmm. You think because you got a little bit of success that that's, the, that's it? No, that's not it. The thing mm -hmm. is, is that the Lord can do so much more for yeah. you. You think just because you got a good amount of followers on social media that that's it? No. Stop limiting God's will. Stop limiting his, his you know, his power in, uh, in all the things that he truly wants to do through you for his glory. Amen. That's the thing. Like, we, 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 we get so caught up in, oh, all right, yeah, I'm cool. I've made it. 
you ain't we ain't make nothing mm-hmm. we still got work to do yes right he just puts you in a different position right so that so that he can truly work through you on another level and oftentimes that's what happens so we can either stop you know prostituting ourselves to the fame and glory and all this other stuff now listen don't get me wrong i think that that's really cool that people see you and they're admired by you they're admired by the word that you share they're admired by all of that Mm -hmm. but it means nothing if you don't give it back to him that's right It, it means nothing and I'm a firm believer that I, I tell people this all the time. Keep me humble. Keep me humble because I'm human just like everybody mm-hmm. else. What I don't want is to reach a certain level of success that like I even forget mm-hmm. on how I got here. Mm-hmm. Right. So I make it, you know, my my business to move forward and make sure that I'm in that prayer closet. Yes. I make it my business that, hey, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. I don't know what things are going to be added unto mm-hmm. me, but I know I have to keep seeking the kingdom first. Yeah. I know I have to be, you know, what's seeking, seeking the kingdom? Well, being a good husband, seeking the kingdom first. Being a good wife, seeking the kingdom first. Being a good servant, mm-hmm. being a good leader, being yeah. a good father, mm-hmm. being what it is that God has called you to be. And because you do these things, I'm going to add unto you right and and it's not always yeah. like materialistic no it's not it could be health it could be yeah. um like just a, a bunch of reasons like i don't want you guys feeling that success or getting to another level solely only has to do with um with with materialistic blessings yeah, 100%. because you know, a lot of times it's more than that. It's it's more than that. Like just waking up, being able to be healthy is a blessing. Being able to have breath in our lungs is a blessing. Being able to know that our kids woke up this morning and they're healthy, mm. that's a blessing. Being able to know that we're not in a hospital bed. We have both legs. We have both arms. We have a mouth to speak. We can hear. We can see. All of those are blessings. Mm. So it's not solely limited to materialistic but yeah i feel like these blessings are even more yeah than you know than materialistic things you I, know yeah 100 percent. i feel like some people they feel they feel like god has left them mm-hmm. and what you have to do is you have to figure out bless you you have to figure out <sighs> where you. where was it where where did where did we go wrong lord where did i mess up so we we oftentimes we put the onus on god we put the we put we point the finger so much that we don't realize what we did wrong Mm -hmm. god why isn't my marriage working out the way that this marriage is working out well that's not your business as to why focus on your house focus on what it is that I called you to do. Have you added me in your marriage at all? Mm-hmm. Have you added me in your money? Have you added me in your your business, in your workplace? Have you added me in your life since have this day? Have you consulted with me? Mm. Have you asked me? Have you said, Lord, your will be done above mine? Oof. Now, see, here. here's the thing, right? We want to manipulate God, and we want God to do what we want. Mm-hmm. Now, Will will God grant the 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 desires of your heart? If it's His will, then He'll do it, right? Will He will He grant that? You have to ask Him, mm-hmm. right? You have to ask Him if it's your will, right? So bring all the requests unto the Lord. Now, throughout all those requests, then He'll decipher on which is good and which is not. This is why He's a righteous judge. He is just. He's not going to if just because you say you want this thing to happen doesn't mean that it's actually going to happen because it may not be in his plans for you. I'll tell a story based on that. Right. Amen. So when I was very ignorant to the fact of what down syndrome was, try so many, try so many 21, what our son has Christian, Mm. I was very ignorant to what it was. I didn't really know what it was. Mm -hmm. Um, I just know that it was something in regards to having a special need. 
And when in the very beginning of the doctors telling me that our son could potentially have Down syndrome, I, we were going to church. Obviously we were going faithfully at that time for a few years already. And I began praying like, Lord, please like, don't let my son have down syndrome. Like I'm scared. Like, I don't know what that means. Like, I don't know how to take care of a kid with down syndrome. Like it's going to be too much Lord. Like they're going to make fun of him. It's just going to be a burden. Like it's going to be a lot like Lord, please. If he's in my belly right now, Lord God, and he has down syndrome, change it, Lord, change him. Father God, you have the potential to do it. And he does. You know, you have the potential to do anything like you're a powerful, almighty God. And I was praying these things. And as I sat in church one day, our pastor preached a sermon. And it was in regards to like, we can't manipulate God into doing what we want him to do because his plan is above ours and his ways are higher than ours. So rather than now, mind you, pastor did not know I was praying this, but I I felt like this cert, like, I felt like when he preached that sermon, there was no one in the room but me. Yeah, and I and I felt like I was like sinking in my seat mm-hmm. when I was sitting there listening to the sermon that our pastor, Pastor Edgar, was preaching, and I was just like, "Oh my God!" Like, I feel like he's talking directly to me. Mm-hmm. He's telling me not to manipulate, like, not not try not to manipulate my. God with the prayers that I'm praying by saying like, Oh Lord, change Christian. If he has down syndrome, change him just because I was ignorant and I was afraid Mm. except, you know, so then even with that, when I learned that in church, I then started changing my prayer to Lord, whatever your will is, let your will be done. If Mm. you want my son to have down syndrome, teach me how to be the mom and walk with me Mm. on this journey to be the best mom that I can be to my son. And that's that that's what my prayer was. I changed my prayer to Lord, whatever your will is, let it be. Because your will is the best for our lives and yeah. he has been the blessing mm. in our life. Yes, he has. And when you when you tell that story, it's it's so impactful because I feel like there are so many people that pray the same prayer in different situations. Well, please don't let this and please don't let that Instead, we should be embracing what can potentially be. Mm-hmm. If it's the Lord's will to happen, then I know he's going to prepare me. I know he has equipped me. I know that I will. As And, and this, is our, this is our testimony. God has given us challenges that we necessarily wasn't really, at least we didn't think that we were equipped for. But along the way, he has given us what we needed when we needed Mm -hmm. it at the right time that we needed it. It's almost like the Israelites when they were freed, you know, from slavery. And when they were freed, God was, you know, dropping manna and quail. And as he was dropping that, they were ignorant to what he was giving them. And saying, hey, listen, I'm going to bring you through the promise. I'm going to bring you to the promised land. And they were getting very, very impatient as to, wait a minute, like what promised land are we talking about here? We've been in captivity for 400 years. Do you think that God is going to immediately put you in the promised land after you've been in a place for 400 years? Mm -hmm. You've been in 400 years of some people have been in ignorance for 400 years. Now, once he brings you out. Now it's a process. I was going to say it's a process to yes. get you to where yes. I need you to go, right? Can God do things immediately? Of course He can, mm-hmm. right? But, but where's the heart change in that? But where's the heart change in that? Are you fully, fully, fully transformed? Mm-hmm. Right? We talk about this in the Unshakable Method. Like, are you fully? Are you being transformed by the renewing of your mind? That's why I always say when we change the mind, we change the game. Right. So in that process of of the change that's happening, I'm going to be dropping this step by step, day by day. Don't take no more than what you need for the day. And oftentimes we take more than what we need for the day. And by the next day, it's already spoiled. Mm -hmm. So we have to be careful on how we, you know, 
uh, take in for what it is today. Don't take more than what you need or what he's giving yeah. you. And as we grew with Christian, we started to learn so much more. And I feel that even as a dad, like, you know, I'm just that type of guy that's just like, I'm super excited for the challenge. Bring the challenge on and let's rock and let's go. Because clearly this is God's will for it to happen. Yeah. And whatever is laid out, I'm ready for it. Right. And is can it be scary? Can it be fearful? Yeah, I guess so. But me, I'm just I'm just that type of guy that, you know what? If the Lord allowed it to happen, then I know that he's going to equip us for it. We're not going to be in a position that we're not, we're not going to have what we need. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And we've never been like that. And I think that sometimes people just need that, that particular reminder that has he failed you? Right. Has he forsaken you? Mm -mm. Has he left you? Like, you know, I know the situation may look kind of funky right now. It may look shaky, but the reality is you got to think back of all the other things that God has already brought you through to this particular yeah, point. We serve a God who does not sleep nor slumber. nor slumber. He has not forgotten you. This The process has nothing to do with him yeah. and him not being able to move or not being able to do what he has to do. It is about us having a heart transformation, a heart transplant to be processed, to be crushed, to be pruned, to be all these things all for his honor and his glory so that we can be able to share our testimony with others. Amen. So in conclusion, everybody, you know, return to him, but return to, to the Lord in, in the sense of, you know, fixing that, fixing that marriage, fixing that business, fixing that relationship, fixing those finances, but return to him first, Right. Return to him and stop prostituting yourself to the world. Yeah. The world has zero for you at the and end the of the day. And the grass is not greener on it, the other it, side. It never is. It and never is. And nothing's ever easy. If you sit here and say, well, this marriage is hard. Maybe my next one will not be as hard. Yeah. That's right. a lie. It's <laughs> almost like, oh, well, this church was this. But you know what? Like, um, maybe the next church. Listen, everybody is going to have their issues no matter where you go. It's always going to be a problem. It's, it's not, you're never going to have a perfect marriage because yeah. you don't have perfect people in the marriage, Amen. right? You're never going to be at a perfect church because you have imperfect people in the church, right? But it's your will. It's your drive. It's, it's what God has called. If he called you to it, then you got to see, he'll see you through it at Amen. the end of the day. Amen. So with that being said, everybody, listen, for myself, Kenneth Allen Thomas, my beautiful wife, Jocelyn Thomas, make sure you like, subscribe, comment below. All right, when we change the mind, y'all, we change the game. Listen, if you want to go ahead and donate to the podcast so we can keep giving you great content, please be my guest. There's going to be a link below in the description and share this with a friend, a family member, or somebody that really, really, really needs to hear it. Amen. Until the next time, we will see y'all when we see y'all. All right? One love. Peace.